Today, I show you why I turn my canvas. Like, seriously, girl, what are you doing? Stay tuned to find out. Here's the reference photo I'm working with, so let's grab some brushes and paint. In this video, you'll learn about mastering the art of painting dog fur and acrylic, focusing on details and realism. Now, many artists struggle with capturing the intricate details of fur, and myself included, often resulting in flat and unrealistic paintings. Now, one of the main reasons for this is because we don't always understand the anatomy of fur itself. Fur is made up of multiple layers, each with its own texture and pattern, and oh my gosh, it took me a while to figure that one out. But when we try to paint fur without considering these layers, we end up with a two-dimensional representation that usually lacks depth and dimension. Now let me talk to you a little bit about this cool brush. This is a really funky brush. It's called the comb brush. Now, the reason for that is because there are definite gaps between um, the, the hairs on this brush, and therefore it gives a bit of a comb slash fork type <laughs> appearance. So the first time I saw this was in someone else's video. It was used by Michael Smith, and I'll pop up his channel on the screen, but he's a crazy, crazy good realistic oil painter. And he used it for some parts of water in one of his paintings, and I was really mesmerized and decided to purchase one of these cool brushes for myself. Now, you do need to handle this one with care, and I find that gentle strokes work the best. You push too hard, you'll get just a big blob of paint instead of the separated lines that the brush is designed to create. One tip I want to give you, though, is that sometimes it's better not to mix the colors with the brush that you're intending to use. Now, I have had instances where I've done that and ended up with parts of different colors in the bristles still that had not mixed together quite yet. And then you end up with different colors on your canvas versus what's on your palette. So fun fact about this video, it has no fast forward parts in it at all. So you can watch me paint the speed that I normally paint with the exception of some cuts where I am mixing a new color, cleaning a brush or taking a good hard look at my reference photo. Another common mistake is using the wrong brush strokes. When painting fur, it's, it's essential to use soft, gentle strokes that mimic the direction of the fur growth. Now this helps to create a sense of movement and texture and can make a huge difference in the overall realism of the painting. I'm popping up the reference photo for you just to show you what I'm using to work from. Remember, this is a guide, not a law. I am going in with a darker shade, same comb brush though, and if something is working for me, I tend to stick with the brush until I feel I'm done. Now, many artists struggle with color selection, often using colors that are either too bright or too dark, which results in a fur that looks very unnatural. Now, I have struggled with this and I still do. I'm not always great at picking the right shades or values, and I do end up sometimes adjusting the tone of color later through glazing. No, that's not a bad thing. I mean, I learn and hopefully you do too, but I do think I might benefit in doing a little deep dive into color theory. You know, note to self.
Here I'm going in a little too hard and added a little too much pressure on the brush. Remember what I said about soft, gentle strokes? Yeah, that didn't happen here. I'm changing over to a itty bitty liner brush to work on some small details. Now when I put some shadows in around the eyes, I painted over some of the highlights that I had previously put in. So I'm just going back in to refine those. Understanding the play of light and shadow on the fur is, is crucial in creating a realistic painting. Light and shadow can completely transform the way the fur looks. It can add depth and dimension to the whole painting. So by observing how light and shadow interact with the fur, you can create a much more realistic representation. And remember, I'm still learning, not the expert here. Here's the reference photo once again. If you're wondering why there are lines and squares all over the photo, that is because I use the grid method for my sketch. So this way I get the proportions as close to realistic as possible. Even with the grid though, <laughs> I still make mistakes and I do sometimes get proportions slightly off at times, but I can assure you that using this technique has really improved my work and art in general. If you would like to see a video on this, let me know. I started this painting in April of this year and in mid-May I kind of stopped working on it on a regular basis. Now the reason for that was a family visit that was way overdue. My mom and her husband came for almost four weeks. For those who don't know, I live in Canada but I was born and raised in the Netherlands and they came from my home country to spend time with the kids and myself. And after that, summer break was approaching really quick so no work was done at all on this painting for four months. And I finally picked up a brush again to work on it this past week, so I'm hoping to finish it soon. Here I realize why I'm not able to do what I want to do and here's my solution to that. I turn my canvas. I do not remember which artist showed me this trick, but it is a game changer. I'm right handed and certain strokes just won't work with the anatomy of my hands, fingers and wrist. In the past I struggled with uneven strokes and weird directions of fur or other brush strokes because it just wasn't naturally flowing from my hand, so by turning the canvas upside down or even a quarter, I can position my hand in a way that works for me and still get good results, or, you know, at least I try. <laughs>
On a different note, many artists also struggle with capturing the subtle variations in color and texture that occur within a single strand of fur. This is where layering and glazing come in, and it allows you to build up layers of color and texture to create a much more realistic representation. I do apologize for the angle of the camera. I, uh, I didn't know I was almost out of frame here. So when I set up the phone, yes, by the way, I use my good old trusty iPhone to film these videos. I set it up and then get into the zone and totally forget about the camera. Just focus on the painting and all I do with the phone is stop recording here or there as filming for one hour straight results in my video not being airdrop properly. Yeah, I know, technical difficulties, so I break my video up in multiple sessions that I then airdrop onto my very ancient MacBook. I have to be nice to it, it doesn't handle a lot well anymore. painting fur and learning how to do it. In these videos I aim to explore and show different techniques such as layering, brush selection and different colors to create depth and texture in your fur paintings. Now one of the key techniques is layering, which involves building up of layers of paint to create a sense of depth and dimension. This can be achieved by using both opaque brush strokes as well as thin glazes of paint, which can be built up over time to create a very rich and textured finish. Another essential technique is brush selection. By using the right brushes, you can create a range of different textures and effects from soft and fluffy to coarse and wiry. Now I have yet to do an animal with coarse or wiry fur, so stay tuned for that in the future. Um, but another thing to pay attention to is color mixing. Color selection, which is crucial in creating a realistic representation of fur. So by mixing colors in the right way, you can create a range of different shades and hues that capture the subtleties of real fur. I'm planning of setting up a second camera to capture my palette and how I mix colors, and well, perhaps also how I make mistakes, but hey, keep an eye out for that as well. Time for some longer strokes. It sure is nice to change things up after doing tiny little strokes for a while. Yes, this can get pretty repetitive. Dip brush and paint, put a few strokes on, dip brush and paint, repeat, you get the gist. <laughs> it's a patient job, but I do love how quickly the fur starts to look like it's overlapping the darkest section of the fur below it. Again, layers and layers, my friend. Now, as you practice these techniques, you'll start to notice a difference in your paintings. You're going to be able to capture the subtleties of fur and your paintings, hopefully, <laughs> will start to take on a whole new level of realism. But it takes some practice, though, and please don't get too discouraged if things don't turn out perfect right off the bat. I still struggle, and I continue to do so as I am still learning and developing these skills myself. This is not a race. Take your time.
I do hope you've discovered some new and useful techniques that can elevate your dog fur paintings or any other fur paintings to a new level of realism. By mastering these techniques, you can take your paintings to the next level. Now, this painting is still in progress and future videos finishing this piece will come to you soon. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to check out my other videos and, you know, tutorials and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Stay happy, keep your peace, and God bless you. Bye-bye!